What's up, y'all? Well, guess what? I am doing a cooking video finally. I think this is the first cooking video in the new truck. Is it not? It is. It is. And guess what we're going to make today? We are going to make a low carb or keto cinnamon rolls. You guys, I made these a couple of weeks ago. I posted it on Instagram and a lot of you wanted to see how to make it. And it's super easy. So that's what we're going to make today. If you're not following us on Instagram, go follow us at The Crafty Trucker. We're on Facebook too. So let's take a look at what ingredients we're going to need for this today. you guys so now that you know what ingredients you're gonna need for this let's get to making it the first thing that we're gonna make is the dough for our cinnamon rolls and we're using a fathead dough recipe which is super easy I've made fathead dough pizza before you can make all kinds of things with fathead dough including cinnamon rolls now some people if you are allergic to almond flour probably this won't be the recipe for you. As always, I'm gonna link the recipe I'm using down in the description box so you can follow it step by step if you wanna check that out. I'll find a couple other recipes to link that you can make the same concept, but they don't use almond flour. Now, I haven't tried any of those, so I don't know how well they are, but I will find a couple and link those below as well because I know some people can't tolerate almond flour. I wanna give you guys options, but let's get to making our fathead dough. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our one and a half cups of mozzarella cheese, pour that into a bowl. Then we're gonna take our two tablespoons of cream cheese. Now, the recipe calls for four tablespoons because we need two tablespoons for our dough and two tablespoons for our filling. So I've cubed those up. I'm gonna throw my two tablespoons or in essentially it's one ounce of cream cheese. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the cheese mixture. We're going to pop it in the microwave for about 90 seconds. We're going to check it halfway through and stir it. We basically are just melting our cheeses together until they're nice and incorporated. It's been halfway through. We're going to take this down and stir it. You see it's our cheese is starting to melt. We're just gonna stir this and we're gonna pop it back in for another 45 seconds. Now, depending on the voltage or wattage of your microwave, it may take longer or less time to get this fully incorporated. So you just keep putting it back in and letting it go for anywhere from 30 to 45 seconds. Take it out and stir until it's incorporated. And I'll show you after we do another 45 seconds. All right, so we've done another 45 seconds and this should be good to go. See how that's nice and melted? We're just gonna stir that and that's well incorporated now. See that? Now this is gonna be very sticky, but I'll show you a couple tricks you can do. The next thing we're gonna add to make our dough is we're gonna add our one cup of almond flour and we're gonna add our one egg, which we've already beaten. She beats me all the time. <laughs> I do if you don't listen. <laughs> now, once we have all those ingredients in, we're just going to mix this together. I start with a spoon to get it started. Once it's started, then we're gonna use our hands to get in there and knead it and get it well incorporated together. So we'll just start out by stirring it together with a spoon. And it takes a little bit of time to get it incorporated and mixed in well. Like I said, the spoon will help get you started, but then you're really gonna wanna get in there with your hands to get it nice and kneaded together. And as I said, it's gonna be sticky. So there's a couple tricks you can do to help with that. You can either wet your hands a little bit with some water, or if you have a spray, some kind of, like I use avocado spray or coconut spray, you can coat your hands with that. And that's gonna help the, from keeping the dough from sticking to your hands. Today, I'm just gonna use some spray on my hands to do it. I have already washed my hands, so my hands are nice and clean. Make sure you wash your hands before you do this. So I just put a little bit on my hands and rub that together. As you can see, my hands are nice and oiled. 
and we're just going to get in there and we're going to knead this dough together. Now be careful, depending on how long you microwaved your cheese for, because it will be hot. This is warm, it's not super hot, so we're okay. So you just kind of knead it together. You can see it's even sticking to my hands now. It's a super sticky dough. All right, you can see how, you now you can see how the almond flour and everything, it is, looks like a dough. That's what we want. Let me get this cleaned off my hands and go on to the next step. Hands are nice and clean again. So the next step we're gonna do is we're gonna roll the dough out so we can add our filling. Now I've showed you guys these before in previous cooking videos, but you wanna use parchment paper or that's what I use. I find it the easiest. I just get these, they're like the already pre-cut sheets. You can get the rolls however you wanna do it. But what I do is I'm gonna take a square of parchment paper and like I said the dough is sticky so I'm gonna put a little bit of my avocado oil on my parchment paper and I'm just gonna kind of smooth that around or move it around so it kind of covers the whole sheet here of where I'm gonna be rolling my dough out now I have two pieces of parchment paper because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my dough and then I'm gonna put another piece of parchment paper on top to roll it out. So that's good and coated. And again, I've got some on my hands, so I'm gonna go ahead and use that hand to grab the dough so it doesn't stick to my hands as much. We're gonna just plop that right down on our first piece of parchment paper. I'm gonna get my second sheet. I'm gonna do the same thing, just coat it with my avocado oil. And again, this is just to help keep it from sticking. Now you can use just the parchment paper alone without putting the oil, but it's gonna stick some. This just makes it a lot easier and keeps it from sticking and it just makes it easy. And you know, we like easy. So we've got that nice and coated. Let me wipe some of this off my hands. Now, we're gonna put this right on top of our dough. Now you can do this with your hands. You don't need a roller. I have this little roller. It's a pizza dough roller that I found on Amazon. I've probably showed this before. I'll link it below, but you don't need this. You can use a regular rolling pin. I've even used bottles of oil before. It just makes it a little bit more nice and uniform and even. So I, that's why I like that. But what I'll do is I'm gonna get this started kind of flatten it out a little bit with my hands at first. And once I've got it a little flattened, then I'm gonna take my roller and I'm just gonna kind of evenly roll it out into the rectangle of the parchment paper. So you just gotta kind of work at it. It doesn't have to be a perfect rectangle. You just wanna work it out and until it's kind of the in even thinness or thickness across the whole dough. So I just work at it until I get it pretty good. Again, we don't have to be perfect. It's not gonna inhibit the taste if it's not a perfect rectangle or a perfectly even thickness or thinness along the whole thing, just as long as it's close. I've got my dough where I want it. I'm just gonna set this off to the side for just a minute because now we're gonna work on our filling for the cinnamon rolls. What we need for that, two tablespoons of cream cheese. I've got a tablespoon of butter. I'm gonna stick this in the microwave to get this melted and incorporated. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a paper towel over this because you gotta be careful. You don't wanna do it too quickly because it will pop and get all over your microwave. That happened to me last time. That's how I know. <laughs> so I'm just gonna start off slow and do this for about 10 seconds and check it and then we'll stir it. Cause basically, like I said, all we want it is softened so we can mix the two together. Now I've got about 10 seconds. It's starting to soften a little bit. I'm just gonna smooth that out and then I'm gonna pop it back in for another 10 seconds. And I just do that until it gets melted enough where it'll mix together and be soft. I've microwaved this for a total of about 25 seconds and our butter and cream cheese is good and melted. So I'm just gonna mix that together. Now your cream cheese may be a little bit lumpy. That's okay because we're still gonna add some other goodies into this but you want it soft enough where you're going to be able to spread it on your dough. What I'm going to add to this mixture is I'm gonna add 
one fourth cup of sweetener. Now, when we were showing the ingredients, I have two sweeteners here. They're both swerve, but one is a granular swerve and one is a confectioner's swerve. So this is just a finer sugar or sugar replacement. It's a low carb sugar. This sugar, the confectioner's sugar, is what I'm gonna use for the icing. But for the filling, I'm gonna use my granular swerve. And that's what I have measured out here in one fourth cup. We're gonna add that to our butter and cream cheese. And then I'm also going to add a tablespoon of cinnamon. And if you get a little bit extra cinnamon in there, that's okay. Ain't nothing wrong with a little extra cinnamon. We'll just have a little bit cinnamony, cinnamony, cinnamony rolls. <laughs> so once we have all that in there, we're just gonna mix that together, get it well incorporated. Mm, it already smells good. Can you smell it? No. <laughs> I can smell it because I'm right here. So just continue to mix it till it gets all nice and incorporated, like I said. So I've got this all well incorporated for our filling for our cinnamon rolls. So we're ready to put this on our fathead dough. So let's take off this top parchment paper. I've got a spatula here. I find that the easiest. I'm gonna kind of just plop this down in the middle of the dough and I'm gonna kind of spread it along the dough. Just kind of get it nice and even as you can. And it's just gonna be a thin layer of filling on your dough. So I'm just gonna continue to do this until I get a nice even coat on my dough. All right, y'all, so I've got my filling spread out as evenly as possible as I could. And don't worry if you have some bare spots because it's all gonna kinda cook together and it's gonna be good anyway. So our next step is we are gonna need to roll this into a log. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use a little bit more of my avocado spray on my hands because again, your dough is still sticky and I'm gonna start at one end and I'm just gonna roll the dough into a log. And just be careful, go slow, because your fathead dough can be a little bit um, fragile, <laughs> as you can see here, depending on how well you rolled it out. So I'm, some thick spots. Yeah, there'll be some thick spots, some thin spots, but as you roll it into a log, it's gonna cover those up and it's gonna be fine. So we're gonna just keep rolling. We've got us a little indention where the parchment paper was folded, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, when I get to the end here, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of pinch this in to the dough, kind of smooth it out so it sticks together and doesn't come unrolled. As you can see here, it don't have to be perfect. Like I said, it's gonna cook and it's gonna be fine and taste fine. The key that I have found to this before we cut it into our cinnamon rolls and bake it, I'm gonna put this into the fridge for about 30, 45 minutes and let it chill. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna make it easier for us to slice it into our individual cinnamon rolls. So I'm gonna pop this in the fridge for about 30 to 45 minutes, then we'll come back and we'll finish this up. It has been 45 minutes and I have pulled our cinnamon roll log out of the refrigerator and it's nice and firmed up and gonna be really easy for us to cut. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna transfer this over to my cutting board. You wanna take a fairly sharp knife and we're gonna cut our log into about one inch sections and then we're gonna put them on our baking pan. You could bake these on the parchment paper. I have this pizza pan, which I use for most everything we bake in the oven because it's perfect size for the convection oven. And I have this, what's called a seal pat. And it's basically just a silicone mat that's a non-stick mat. And I just use that instead of baking with the parchment paper. So let's go ahead and get our cinnamon roll log cut. Like I said, we're gonna do about one inch little sections and we're just gonna set those on our baking pan. You want them a couple inches apart. You don't want them touching to bake. So about one to two inches apart. And as you can see in there, look at that cinnamon roll. Ooh, look at that cinnamon, yummy. 
<laughs> and it, you know, it really depends on how thin or thick you roll out your dough, I think, as to how big your log is going to be and how big the cinnamon rolls. They're not huge by any means, but they sure are tasty. Before I pulled these out of the fridge, I did get my oven heating up. It is heating up to 425 right now, and it is almost heated up. By the time we're done cutting these, it should be almost good and heated up. How many cinnamon rolls did that give us there? We got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12 cinnamon rolls. So once our oven is heated up, I'm gonna put these in the oven and I'm gonna bake them at 425 for 15 minutes or until they're golden brown. Once they're done baking, we're gonna take them out while they're cooling. I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna show you how we're gonna make our icing for them. So our cinnamon rolls are all finished cooking. I again cook them at 425 for 15 minutes pulled them out they're nice and golden brown i've let them cool and i've already transferred them onto just a paper plate now i'm going to show you how we're going to mix up the icing for these it's so so easy now i had told you about the two different swerves i had the granular swerve which i used for the cinnamon filling and now we're going to use our confectioner's swerve for the icing what i've done is i've measured out one fourth cup of our confectioner's sugar i'm just going to put this into a bowl and there's not really any measurements for this other than the one fourth cup of confectioner's sugar what we want to do is we're going to add heavy whipping cream and we just are going to start with a little bit and then i'm going to add a little bit of vanilla extract and what we're going to want to do is we're just going to whisk this together you just want to keep adding your heavy whipping cream and mixing or whisking this together until it gets to a icing consistency. Now, if you end up adding too much heavy whipping cream, you can always add some more confectioner's swerve or whatever type of sugar replacement you're using, but make sure it's a confectioner's type. Monk fruit makes one. There's a couple different kinds. So as you see, it's a little runny, but not bad. It actually, it might not look as thick as it is on camera but you don't want it too thick i mean you can make it as whatever the consistency is you want it to be basically so for us this is pretty good i'm gonna leave it at that and now we're ready to ice our cinnamon rolls i'm just gonna take my spoon and i'm just gonna kind of drizzle this on top of each cinnamon roll here jason already tried one of the end pieces without icing how was it good Tastes I like a biscuit it tastes like a biscuit. Yeah, yeah they, 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 it didn't have much cinnamon on the, bis, the end part. Right, the end pieces, they kind of, yeah, they're not as good as the rest of it, but man, these are pretty good. There we have it. We have our low carb or keto cinnamon rolls. Those are so quick and easy to make. Now keep in mind, they're not gonna taste like the Pillsbury out of the box, or no, what are those called? The cans, out of the can cinnamon rolls. We used to love those things, man. We would get those and eat those all the time. Like every weekend, we would make it a point to make one of those. Yeah. But they are really, really good being low carb. They're super easy to make on the truck if you have an oven like we do. Again, I I'm gonna leave the link to this recipe in the description box. If you make these, come back and let me know how you like them. I always love hearing when you try the recipes I try. I will also find some other links to a few other recipes for cinnamon rolls, for low carb cinnamon rolls that don't use almond flour. And if you try those, let me know how those are as well. I might try that in the next time I make these, but I at least wanted to show you these since we had already tried them and we know they're really good. Hope you guys liked the first cooking video in the new truck more to come i promise thank you guys as always for watching and subscribing until our next video peace love and expediting give me a cinnamon roll <laughs> mm. <laughs>